Hi, I'm Molly Jane, a managing editor here at Cointelegraph, and I'm talking to Maddie Greenspan about what's happening this week in the markets. My first question for you about the markets and amid um, this week is after so after another rally, do you think that there's bull fatigue and do you think we could be heading for another correction? I think we're kind of seeing it today, but I want, of course, your stance on it. Yeah, it's an excellent question. I guess that's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know, right? Um, so I think that uh, before we've laid out kind of two bullish scenarios, uh, number one is an extremely aggressive scenario where we have this rising trend line. Uh, you can see it here on the chart. Um, this is basically, this is a, an ascending wedge pattern if you use the psychological resistance at 9,000 and you can see we are coming uh, into some sort of a consolidation at the top. So this is uh, the aggressive bullish scenario. Um, and then there is a less aggressive, so a conservative bullish scenario where you draw your rising trend line a little bit more conservatively. And in this case, there's definitely um, a possibility of coming back down, even testing, you know, six and a half or 7,000 levels uh, if, you know, we do, if this does play out. Um, so those are my two kind of bullish scenarios. Obviously, uh, past performance is not an indication of future results and anything can really happen. So do you think that Bitcoin then is trading in sort of a rising wedge pattern? And if so, does this signal to you bearish trends? It is. I mean, those are both kind of rising wedge patterns that I mentioned. Um, what's interesting to note is that the volumes across exchanges uh, and in general, even on the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, the futures markets and all the derivatives of Bitcoin, everything is kind of dissipating. I mean, we saw some incredible all-time highs in mid uh, in mid May, as far as volumes are concerned. The volumes are still very elevated. Uh, the transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain are near the all-time highs, but we can see that they're coming down a little bit as things relax, uh, as we enter into this consolidation zone that we're in at the moment. So if we get a breakdown in either direction, I mean, the excitement can come flooding back in, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Okay, so last week, um, Bitcoin's price crashed 11% in just a matter of hours on Bitstamp. Is this kind of thing anything that people should worry about? Um, so it, it depends what, what kind of trader you are. I mean, if you're a, a short-term trader with very high leverage, yeah, you know, it's always good to be cautious because those type of things can certainly uh, stop you out. Um, you know, for long-term hodlers, I, I would say that it's not because um, with that flash crash, we could see that, um, yes, there was a large player who um, sold off some of his holdings, uh, but the market quickly uh, quickly returned to the previous levels. So um, this is the type of dynamic that we get in the low liquid environment. Um, and low liquidity is really the uh, one of the hallmarks of Bitcoin's price action. Interesting. So there was a comment this week from venture capitalist Jason Calacanis that Bitcoin will likely be replaced by new technology and could eventually trade to zero. I mean, these kind of comments are said all the time, but could you speak about this sure. one? Yeah, of course. I mean, eventually, yes. Why not? Um, what's important to remember is that the Bitcoin uh, movement is not really about technology. Um, you know, Bitcoin was invented in 2009, more than 10 years ago. Um, and certainly there are other cryptos and other, uh, you know, digital assets that are much quicker uh, than Bitcoin are today, so that are techno te technologically superior anyways. Um, Bitcoin doesn't derive its value from the technology. Bitcoin is a movement, it's a, it's, an, it's a network. It derives its value from the network itself, from the people that believe in it. Um, so yes, uh, I believe that there are, you know, techn technology advances very quickly, um, but what we're seeing with Bitcoin is not necessarily about technology. It's about the movement that's being enabled by the technology. I got it. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can separate those two things then. Um, back to the prices. So what can you tell us about the recent Bitcoin Satoshi Vision success? Because even today, it's one of the only coins that's up. Oh, um, you're talking about Bitcoin Cash SV. Yeah. Right, so um, Bitcoin SV uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a delist SV campaign that went on a while ago. Binance delisted it. Uh, here in eToro, we never listed Bitcoin SV to begin with. Uh, we followed the other Bitcoin Cash uh, hard fork, the ABC. Um, 
in general, generally speaking, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, when he kind of spoke about hard forks, he said it's very dangerous to follow uh, a minority fork uh, because it can be unstable. Now, because of the D-List SV campaign, uh, liquidity on Bitcoin Cash SV is very limited at the moment. Um, and what we can see is that it's kind of trading like a penny stock. So any and all volumes can move the price immensely. And that can work out in both directions. So let's say, um, you know, the supporters of Bitcoin Cash SV come in with even a small uh, buying order, let's say $50,000 or $100,000, and they can move the price immensely. But remember what they have in their war chest at the moment. So if any one of them decides to sell off their holdings, the price could, the price could crash just as quickly. Interesting. I, I didn't think about it that way. It's a thin market, you would say, right? It's extremely thin liquidity. So my last question then, not about Bitcoin SV just in general, but do you think that it overall is wise to be bullish right now for the crypto markets? Um, it depends who you are and how your portfolio is made up. Uh, for myself, at the moment, I'm holding about 13% uh, in crypto uh, of my entire portfolio, and you can see it on... on uh, on my eToro account. And the thing is that, uh, you know, okay, so at the moment I have 15% in crypto uh, and around when Bitcoin hit uh, 8,000, I was taking some of the profits off the table. Cryptos are, very, are a very high risk asset class. So to hold, uh, you know, too much crypto, is, it can be extremely risky. The best strategy for any investor is to think about diversification, think about uh, different uh, currencies, commodities, stocks, ETFs that you feel have long-term potential and kind of diversify yourself among them. That way you can, uh, that you, you can manage the risk that you're taking. Um, so within that, is it smart to be bullish on crypto? Uh, yeah, because it has a very good chance, uh, you know, of seeing another kind of parabolic rise. We've seen Bitcoin do that several times in the past and it certainly can do it again. And if you're only taking a small amount of risk, um, that, type of, that type of rise, if it should play out, um, can quadruple uh, or quintuple your overall profits in your entire portfolio, even with a very small exposure. Got it. Well, that was my last question. So thank you for speaking with us as always. Thank you very much for having me, Molly, and have an excellent day. So that was me, Molly Jane, talking with Maddie Greenspan about what's going on in this week's markets. Be sure to check out our Hodler's Digest that was published just today. This episode is sponsored by Trade Santa. Trade Santa is a cloud-based trading bot. Set it up in less than two minutes, trade multiple pairs, choose between long and short strategies, use tech analysis indicators, and see your results in real time. Trade Santa works 24-7 to get you the profit you set. The platform is already integrated with Binance, Bittrex, Bitfinex, and HitBTC. The link is in the description below. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.